Ladies and gentlemen, prior to the buff it received in March of 2023, the Colbert was, according to Wargaming, quote, a tremendous ship in the right hands, but she has poor battle impact and a poor win rate, while her damage output is also lacking in all but the most experienced players' hands, end quote. Those are the words Wargaming offered as justification for the buff that it gave to this ship in the March 2023 update. I just want you to think about that statement for a moment. Ignore the fact that the wording is a little bit awkward, and maybe I sound a little bit ridiculous reading it. The statement appears in the Ministry of Balance article pertaining to the March 2023 update, and its meaning is pretty clear. What Wargaming is saying, when you boil off the sugar coating on their words, amounts to something more like, well, the player base is generally terrible at playing Colbert, and it has a high skill floor. We must therefore increase the potency of the ship's DPM in order to help these players squeeze a little bit more damage out of the thing per game, which will hopefully allow them to impact the battle a little bit more. But I submit to you, ladies and gentlemen, that it is foolish to base your balancing decisions on the average player's inability to meaningfully impact battles or achieve a good win rate using a ship with a high skill floor. And let's try to be objective about this. Colbert does in fact have a high skill floor relative to other cruisers at the tier. For one, it has thin armor that is easily penned by almost everything, and its citadel is juicy and accessible resulting in the Colbert having a tendency to explode. It is true that the hull plating is 32 millimeters, yes. It is equally true that 32 millimeters can only be overmatched by the likes of Yamato and Musashi. Nevertheless, you would need to be a battleship player with smaller guns and a smaller understanding of this game to bounce your shells off a of Colbert's bow plating when you can easily just aim up into its massive shell-catching superstructure or demolish its turrets, whose armor might as well be sheets of paper. Furthermore, Colbert main battery range is poor and its shell travel time is exceptionally slow, making it difficult to deal damage at distance on any target which maneuvers even slightly. And these are also destroyer guns, so the caliber is small and the pen is not as great as other cruisers. And since the Colbert has no smokescreen in which to conceal itself, for example, like Minotaur, it must rely on positioning to ensure its survival. To top it all off, it doesn't have much utility in its consumables. It is purely a damage-dealing support cruiser, which is tuned primarily for the function of dealing damage and practically nothing else. Damage is an important part of this game, but damage alone does not win games. You need either kills or objectives as well. Colbert can deal a lot of damage, but it can sometimes be difficult to convert kills, and you must rely on your teammates to a large degree for things like spotting targets. All of these things make it a little bit more difficult for, to Colbert, for Colbert to have a meaningful battle impact. So yes, it does have a high skill floor. If you want to impact the game with Colbert and not get dev struck or do no damage, you have to understand a number of things and play with them in mind. Most importantly, positioning. At the same time though, prior to the buff, Colbert already had the highest theoretical HE and AP DPM of any ship in the entire game, its higher skill floor notwithstanding. The buff reduced the main battery reload time from 3.5 to 3.2 seconds base. In addition, it increased the amount of HP restored by the repair party consumable from 180 to 238 HP per second. So these buffs addressed two supposed issues, which when named sound ridiculous. The cruiser with the highest DPM in this game is performing poorly in terms of average damage output. Therefore, we must buff the DPM and the people 
and people are dying in it too quickly, so we must improve the heals so that they don't. I'm sorry, but the cruiser with the highest DPM in the game performing poorly in terms of damage output, if that's the case, wouldn't it be logical to assume that improving the DPM is not going to fix it? Obviously, the DPM here is not the problem when it comes to people not being able to have battle impact with this ship. This buff is not going to meaningfully help anyone who fails to put up big damage numbers or achieve battle impact with the Colbert. What it is going to do is sharpen this potent damage dealing tool just a little bit. So now the capable hands that can impact the battle and can achieve a high win rate will have just a tiny bit more DPM to work with and they'll have a little bit extra HP to help them navigate through some of the misplays and mistakes that they probably already don't really make. In other words, this buff does nothing to address the skill floor. Colbert still plays exactly the same way it did, it's just a little bit spicier now. So, why was this buff done? I don't know. I really don't. I'm inclined to speculate that it had something to do with the lackluster hands that couldn't squeeze any battle impact out of pre-buff Colbert. I suspect that some of these hands might possess a tremendous ability to furiously type out complaints to Wargaming about the fact that they can't perform in a ship that they obtained by spending 5,000 units of a mostly useless free in-game currency for the privilege of unlocking a bureau project that they then had to wait at least three months to complete in order to obtain the ship. In plain terms, though, Colbert it received what I am going to refer to as a skill buff. A skill buff, as defined by me, is a buff that is meant to mitigate a general shortcoming that is shared by a large number of players that could broadly be defined as the average players. You see a number of these skill buffs in this game if you search hard enough. Some of my favorite examples include Wooster's 32mm bow and stern plating, and the entire legendary battleship commander skill, Will to Rebuild. These are both skill buffs meant to address the most common shortcomings, especially armor usage and positioning. Armor usage, angling, in other words, and positioning are two fundamental concepts in World of Warships, Warships Legends. Armor usage is pretty easy to understand, even though I'm not sure a lot of people do understand it. Positioning is a much more difficult concept to master, and it's one that even the most talented players must work on consistently in their games. It also just so happens that it is the key skill required in your skill set if you want to do well with the Colbert especially, but really any ship. It's okay for some ships to have high skill floors, ladies and gentlemen. It is okay that not every player can achieve a high battle impact or a high win rate with every ship. There are well over 300 ships in my port alone, and I cannot get the highest battle impact or the greatest win rate out of every single one of them. I have a particular playstyle, and I have particular likes and dislikes. I feel like I'm pretty proficient with destroyers and battleships as classes, but maybe a little bit less adept with cruisers at a whole. And by the way, I suspect that maybe what I said a few moments ago about Will to Rebuild also being a skill buff is going to ruffle some feathers, but let me point your attention to the trio of red ships that we have out here. The last ships left alive on the team, two of them are battleships, and it looks to me like they've been using Will to Rebuild this entire game, which is not going to save them, it's not going to help them win the game, it's not going to help them survive, but what it probably did do is help me farm more damage off of them. You see, the problem with Will to Rebuild and why it's a skill buff is because it encourages poor positioning. These two battleships on the enemy team might be using Will to Rebuild, but they aren't developing crossfires, and so they are not being useful. At least in my opinion. Putting your battleship right next to another battleship, or really any other battleship, putting your ship in the same grid square as another ship, means you're not positioning right. 
Will to rebuild incentivizes poor positioning in this game, and thus it is a buff to skill. For those who cannot position, it allows them to power through their own poor positioning. But anyway, enough about Will to Rebuild. This video really isn't about Will to Rebuild. As you can see, we've racked up over 200,000 damage done with the Colbert. We would have had no problem doing that prior to this buff, and it's just left for the Montana and the other battleship to be farmed. So I guess I'll end with this food for thought for both Wargaming and the player base. To Wargaming, I say consider reversing this silly buff. It isn't necessary and it's only going to help the most capable hands perform a little bit better with this ship. And to the player base, ask yourself next time you feel like there's a problem with a ship and you want Wargaming to buff the ship, is it really the ship that needs buffing? Or is it your own skill? That can be a difficult question to parse out, to be sure, but there are plenty of resources out there to help you understand this game so that you can recognize what is good and what is bad. Seek them out and use them. Hopefully this channel is one of those resources that can be of help to you if you want to get better at this game. If you think so, be sure to give the video a like, consider subscribing if you haven't already, let me know what you think about the Colbert skill buff in the comments section, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.